It's everything I do. It's my whole life. It's, I mean, between waking up and going to bed and everything in between, it's, it's all I do. It's all I think about to the kids and the wife and everything, but it's, that's all we do. My husband and I started Ronin in 2012, September of 2012. So we are just over four years old. Our midwife called and asked us to cater her wedding. Uh, it was for 300 people and it ended up being only 150. We prepped it in our home kitchen. Uh, shortly after that, we realized there was a need for a caterer in town that provided a higher quality of food. It's taken on a life of its own, we feel like, a little bit. I really like the ambiance. That was really nice. And even though the temperature dropped quite a bit during our meal, um, I loved how they brought the blankets out to us and then we brought our jackets out and that was no big deal. And then it made us connect with the people next to us because of the style of the seating. So we became friends with the people on each side of us and it was just really lovely. So this, this idea with the full moon dinner came from a, it's a Japanese cookbook that I have. In one of these cookbooks, there's a river in Japan that he saw that they do moon viewing parties. Um, so they take people out on a boat and look at the moon and it's lovely and multi-course meal, kaiseki is what it's called in Japan. With that in mind, we decided to do something kind of our own version of that here at the farm. We thought we don't have a river like they do in Japan, but we have a forest and we have a garden. Um, so our first dinner we had like 14 on the books or 17 and it's turned into something that always has a wait list and we oversell and it's wonderful. I thought the uh, eating environment was wonderful. It, uh, the ambiance was, was great, but uh, being nestled in to a uh, kind of a treehouse effect, if you will. Uh, I like the, uh, the Yopon area and then the, um, the fire pits that were around as well. It, it really created a nice environment. There's something about this place that really captures people. It's, I don't know if it's like the lights, the, the food, it's just, or maybe it's a combination of everything that's just enchanting. We, we really wanted to um, highlight and focus on uh, what Texas has to offer. This is what I, I think most chefs want to do this, um, and then w once we started You'd always kind of wanted to get farmer fresh stuff, and then we finally found farmers that, that had it and, 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 and pork and, and all, all that kind of meat. It just, they're all the product. The taste was so much better. The, uh, the fact that you're asking, you know, you're talking to local farmers, the same thing to them versus just thinking to a produce person. Um, it, was, it was really, it just everything about it was great. I really enjoyed as, as being an agriculturist, I uh, enjoyed that we are now expressing to the public of where our food is coming from and prior to the meal being able to go out on a tour and see where the uh, protein source was coming from as well as some of the vegetables as well i thought it was it was very educational for a lot of urban people and uh, i think we need to bring on more of this type of reconnection to agriculture People ask us what kind of food we make, and I call it American food because here in America, there's people from everywhere around the world are here, and so it's not hard. You can go anywhere in Houston and get Japanese food and then all that kind of stuff, and so we take a lot of their ideas and, and kind of make them our own, but we try to keep it as honest as we can. If, if a Japanese grandmother was to have some of the food that we made, she would say, this is good. I don't want to go there. My bosses are great, very nice and, and understanding. Um, and they're, you know, because they're, I think they're relatively young and they, they have a passion for this sort of thing. So it's always, it's always nice and encouraging to work for somebody who loves what they're doing. We talked to someone named Katie, who's a good friend of Brian and Amanda, and they sort of pushed us towards coming here and volunteering, so we did. 
and been here ever since. So I met Brian at a restaurant here in Bryan, Texas. He was cooking. I had just started. It's actually kind of a funny story. He never, he, he didn't talk to me for about three months in. And then one day he was training me to replace him because he was leaving to open this establishment. And we just connected immediately. And um, a couple months on the road, I got a phone call to come check out the place. And from the get-go, I was sold. This beautiful property, beautiful land, amazing idea, totally behind it. I've learned to, to think and think things through and, and plan ahead a lot more than I have in the past. The team pretty much voted me farm manager. Um, so I, I basically tell them what to do most of the day. And they really look up to me. I think, which is nice. So it's kind of, it's kind of put me in a, in a leadership role, so, which is good for life. It's very much made my perspective of food change. It's very much made myself more ingredient driven and paying more respect to your ingredients and seeing and learning where they come from and putting the effort to change how you view food and consider food in your life. 